In this week's uh, lecture, we're going to start talking about uh, some expectations and some units that we're going to see in statics. You should first know that statics is, of course, modeled to transfer to Purdue University. It's likely to be one of the hardest courses you will take at Ivy Tech. You will have homework each week, and some of it may take a few hours. Some important things to keep in mind. You really want to schedule weekly time that you can work on the homework outside of class. I encourage you to find someone else that you can work with in the class. Um, that's what I did. That's part of the reason I was able to take statics successfully. If you are having problems, please ask me for help. Feel free to contact me uh, via phone or email. I'd be happy to help you, and you can even text me. I'll be happy to help you in any way that I can. Some things you need to have for the course. Um, first of all, you need to have a pencil and eraser. I, I recommend getting a mechanical pencil, although that's definitely not required. And um, I do recommend getting one of the large white high polymer erasers. Stedler makes a nice one, uh, as does um, Pentel. Keep in mind that assignments graded in pen will, completed in pen will not be graded. That includes labs and tests. Everything in this course needs to be done in pencil, needs to be done in a professional manner. You must also have a ruler or straight edge of some type. Straight lines are required on all problems. This includes underlines um, for all headings, boxes, figures, so on and so forth. I recommend a transparent ruler because it's easier to use. You can tell where the lines are and make sure that you're drawing straight. Um, you can find those for, well, less than a dollar. You also need a calculator. You don't have to have a graphing calculator, um, although that may help you. Um, but your calculator needs to be basic, capable of basic trig functions such as sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as having um, other functions. Parenthetical notation, square roots are very helpful. Devices that can communicate wirelessly are not allowed on tests. Now, if you come to class for a lab or something and you don't happen to have your calculator, you can use your cell phone. I know that most cell phones have that capability. Just realize you may not use that on a test. So I would always be in the habit of having one in your car or in your book bag. All homework assignments must be completed on green engineering paper. I, I mentioned this in, uh, I will mention this in the first example. There are no exceptions to this whatsoever. Everything must be done on green engineering paper. And also I'm going to give you in class a lab pack. The lab pack will have all of your assignments in it for the whole semester as well as um, laboratory activities and some other notes that I'll want you to have. If you're the kind of person that really just feels like you have to have a book, um, there's no text required for this course, but the recommended text if you want to have one or want to look at one is Statics by R.C. Hibbler. There is a copy of it on course reserves for METC 111 and the campus library. I also recommend that you have a three ring binder so that you can keep track of your assignments, your homework, and your notes throughout the class. So most weeks, the format of statics will be as follows. I, will ha I have lectures posted online. Um, you'll have both lecture and recitation most weeks. Uh, the exceptions would be when we have tests and when we have labs. The lectures are going to be posted, as this one is, on YouTube. And participation points will be given to students who come to class to come to recitation with the lecture examples fully written out. So you need to actually watch the lecture videos and write the concepts. The, whole, the only way this is going to work is if you actually go through the practice and work on that. Recitation then will be occurring and it's intended to be a directed workshop where you can work together on problems and ask questions. I've uh, designed the class such that your homework assignments are due at the end of recitation, so hopefully you can finish up um, or get any help that you need during that time. Recitation is not optional. You will not be able to complete most of the assignments during recitation. Make sure that you plan for time to finish that work outside of class. Throughout the course of the semester, in addition, there will be approximately seven labs. Those labs are designed to complement the work that you're doing. They're not intended to replace it. So if you're working along through the homeworks, the labs should really augment that and should help you have a deeper understanding of the topics. So with that uh, introductory information in place, um, let's go ahead and talk about what statics is. So what are we talking about here? 
Well, statics um, is a branch of mechanics. Mechanics is a branch of physical science concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies subjected to forces. And there's sort of three branches to mechanics, rigid body, deformable body, and fluid. In this course, we deal with rigid body mechanics. And that, that grouping is further divided into statics and dynamics. Statics is the study of equilibrium of bodies or objects either at rest or moving with constant velocity. So the sum of all forces acting on a particular object is zero. Physical quantities can be described using two different methods. The first one is a vector. A vector is a quantity that has a magnitude, a line of action, a direction, and a sense. Vectors are typically represented by arrows. Scalars are the second way that we can use, uh, we can describe physical quantities in this course. Um, scalars only have a magnitude and they are typically represented by a single point. Distance, for example, is a scalar. It doesn't necessarily have a direction. We don't, we, if I tell you something is one foot, one foot, that doesn't tell you if it's one foot long, one foot wide. It doesn't tell you which direction it's facing. Um, examples of that would be foot, inch, meter, centimeter, and so on and so forth. Time is another scalar quantity. Um, when I tell you one second, that doesn't automatically indicate to you which any direction or anything like that. So day, minute, hour, and second are all examples of those. Mass is a scalar quantity. Mass is not the same as weight. Weight changes based on gravity. Mass does not change. Weight equals mass times gravity. In METC 111, we are going to use gravity as equaling 9.81 meters per second squared or 32.2 feet per second squared, depending on your, if we're using metric units or US customary units. Please be careful. Do not confuse mass with weight. Units of mass are the pound mass, the slug, the gram, or the kilogram. Now, when we look at statics, a lot of times we're dealing with forces. Force is a vector. It's usually measured in pounds, force, or newtons, and it's an influence that produces a change in momentum or a change in shape. And I have these two pictures here to illustrate that. A change in momentum would be when the ball strikes the racket, it changes from going at some speed to a slower speed. Also, you'll notice the racket itself is deforming. That's because it's undergoing a force that's causing it to deform. The ball is exerting a force in the racket. The racket is exerting a force on the ball. A force has four attributes. The first one is the magnitude, and this is how much. So for example, that particular box is 50 pounds. A magnitude has units as well. Both of those must be present and correct for the problem to be correct. A force also has a line of action or direction. The line of action tells you how many degrees off of horizontal it is. And for this particular course, your answers must always be referenced to horizontal. Okay, so don't tell me how many degrees off of the y-axis it is. Tell me how many degrees off the x-axis it is. Sense. Now, if you tell me 30 degrees off the x-axis, that doesn't tell me if the force is going up into the first quadrant or down into the third quadrant. So sense is typically represented by an arrow, and it tells us which way along the line of action that force is directed. And the last uh, attribute that most forces have is called a point of application. Many mechanical forces have a single point that we can say they originate at. There are some forces that don't. Examples of forces that don't have just a single point of application would be gravity, we a lot of times will draw weight as a single point, but that's not really the case. Gravity acts equally, uh, or gravity acts on all masses, I should say. And then also another example would be magnetics. The magnetic force, similar concept to gravity. It acts on ferromagnetic object, but it doesn't just act at a single point. When we look at this particular course, METC 111, we live in a world that uses both US customary and metric units so you have to do both units and have to be comfortable using both units. FPS is used by many in the United States. Examples would be the foot, the slug, the pound, and the second. SI is used by much of the rest of the world. Examples of that would be the meter, kilogram, newton, and second. Converting between those systems you just have to be careful about how you do it. For answers in METC 111, I'm very concerned about significant figures. This will help me figure out if you uh, understand the concepts and you got the problem correct or not. 
all answers must be reported to at least four significant figures. It doesn't matter what the input was, I'm just across the board saying four sig figs. Non-zero numbers before the decimal point count, non-zero numbers after the decimal point count, and in this course trailing zeros count after the decimal point as well. So some examples, uh, the first one here, 67,000 pounds force has two significant figures. 0 0.0145 seconds has three significant figures. 0 0.0150 newtons has three significant figures. And 489,001 kilograms would have six significant figures.